The North Loop River flows like a strand of braided silver into the prairie town of Ord, Nebraska. The farms in this fertile river valley have long fed a hungry world and nation. Great flocks of ducks and geese still pause here as they have for ages on their migratorial journeys. In recent decades, not all that migrates from Ord has returned. The young people have not, and the jobs and investment capital have not. In Ord and across rural America, a steady stream of decline has left small towns drained and diminished. The challenges that our community faces are, are multiple. We have uh, the out migration of youth, we have businesses that are, are struggling. A lot of our local business owners are getting to the point where they're ready to transition their business and there really is no one else to sell their business to. There's no one solution to the complex problem of rural decline. Yet there is one word that embodies what a successful future can look like. Entrepreneurship really fits with all of the ethic and culture that we have within rural America and rural Nebraska. It's kind of the American dream of you can, you can own and build your own business. You can basically control your own destiny. The destiny of rural America was once tied closely to production agriculture. But with increased mechanization, there are far fewer jobs in farming. Today's rural communities need a more diverse economy, one built on new ideas and untapped local resources. The Hometown Competitiveness Project is helping rural communities to unlock their hidden potential. The HTC was created by the Nebraska Community Foundation and now works in 15 rural Nebraska counties. Hometown competitiveness is helping communities to use their homegrown assets, their local leadership, their local human resource, their local business ideas, and finally, their local charitable assets. We're, we're helping them to build strategies where they're not dependent upon external resources for getting the job done. It sounds almost Pollyannish, I suppose, but folks have to have the confidence that they can make a difference before they try to make a difference. So a lot of what we do is try to help them build that confidence. The other thing we do is to help them develop skills that are necessary to play in a leadership role. Some of those are simple skills like how to run a meeting. Some of them are much more complex, like how to develop a strategic plan that will make sense over the next five years and will take you where you really want to go. With our work, in terms of the idea of HTC uh, and the Center for Rural Entrepreneurship, we work all over the country and in Canada. And I have yet to, to come into a community where there's not entrepreneurial talent that's untapped, uh, that's under-supported, and given an opportunity could really energize the economy. So I'm absolutely convinced uh, that the broader HTC framework has application in a wide range of rural communities. In a small town, being an entrepreneur is as much an attitude as a job description. A rural entrepreneur needs to find opportunity everywhere, even in a bundle of dirty laundry. Well, I've owned PS Etc. for 20 years, and that includes a custom frame shop, a J.C. Penney catalog, country crafts, and a candle shop. Uh, the newest one is our Liberty Cleaners service out of Kearney. Our, we lost our dry cleaners here in Ord, and we thought, wow, we got to do something. We've got prom dresses that need to be cleaned. We've got coats that we're just ending winter. We've got to get those cleaned up. So that is the newest piece at PS Etc. The laundry gets hauled to a dry cleaning shop by a local health service van that makes regular trips to a nearby city. This kind of creative cooperation has been a hallmark of what HTC works to achieve. In rural America, young people have long been taught that success and fulfillment lie elsewhere. But in places like Ord, young people are learning a new ethic of self-determination. 
They're beginning to think like entrepreneurs and leaders. And someday soon, their dreams can reshape this community and reclaim it for their own. We last year had an entrepreneurship class at our school and the, the students in grades five through eight were responsible for forming their own business and they had to produce a product to sell at a business fair at the end of the school year. This is probably our main one, the picture frame holder. I suppose we made over, a little over $500. We just took horseshoes, you know, we heated them up with the torch and then we bent them and then we welded a horseshoe on top of the other horseshoe. There are larger signs that Ord's comeback has begun. A local dental practice has been taken over by a recent graduate. A trio of young mechanics has opened up a popular custom car body shop. Around the town square, there's fewer empty storefronts. In the last year, we have seen so many new startups, so many businesses growing, so many other businesses expanding, and we're seeing more and more uh, individuals who were born and raised in this community, and now they're coming back and they want to raise their children here in this community. And I see that as a success story in itself. In Ord, there's a new sense that hope is no longer an export commodity. With enough care and commitment, hope can flourish in the small communities that we call home. Thanks, Ms. Glopke. You're welcome.